Hi, this is Frank Prendergast, and I'm here with novelist Nancy Richler, author of The Imposter Bride. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. So how do you feel about the uh, Giller nomination? Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thrilled to pieces. Yeah, yeah, it's really been absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really what, you don't even dare to hope for it because you don't want to become a bitter person. Right. So it's yes. really, yeah, it's really been great. The book is set in uh, post-war Montreal right. and revolves around an imposter bride. Right. Um, right. How did this story come to you? The story came to me because the, the imposter bride is a young woman who arrives from Poland after the war and the, she arrives, it's very hard to get into Canada then, so the way that she arrived was a marriage was arranged for her and she arrives in Montreal but the man she's supposed to marry decides he doesn't like the looks of her and he doesn't marry her. And that actually happened to my, um, my paternal grandmother, but it wasn't right after the war, it was in 1903. But I've always been interested in that story, like what it would be like to arrive and have nothing and no one, and then someone doesn't like the looks of you, the, the person on whom you depend to build your life. So I started with that, but then as soon as I started writing, I didn't want to write about 1903, I wanted to write about my own era, and, um, and so I, I was in 1946, because I'm a post-war baby mm -hmm. and um, and everything sort of took off uh, you know on its own at that point I'm wondering would you call this uh, I didn't know how to classify it like Holocaust literature do, w do you know if anything first of all one of the reasons it took me so long to write it was the last thing I ever wanted to write was about the Holocaust because how do you it's been like how do you do anything with that but on the other hand if you grow grew up as I did in the Jewish community after the war especially in Montreal where so many of my friend's parents were survivors of the war, you can't not write about it. So it's a post-Holocaust novel. I never go into anything that happened in Europe. I allude to it. And I'm, sh I'm trying to write from the perspective that we had growing up. Because when we grew up, when we were born, we didn't know anything had happened. And slowly we saw things in our parents, in our, our friend's parents, and it began to dawn on us that something had happened and I'm trying in my character Ruthie I'm trying to sort of mirror what happened to me and my friends realizing what had happened but the novel doesn't it doesn't describe what happened it's more our perception of growing up with adults who lived through that in a community that's trying to go on after that um, there's a, a lesbian character in your book yes. but She's a, she's a minor character. Well, I would she say a minor character. She was more major. She got edited out because, <laughs> she, I, yes, you, you ask your question. <laughs> about my There's a story Nina. there. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. there is a story yeah. there, though. <laughs> um, but uh, her her lesbianism or sexual identity yeah. is is kind of mentioned at the end the of the book end, yeah. and very offhandedly. It's offhandedly because I was trying to show just how deeply closeted people were because it was such a shock to me when I, when all of a sudden, because growing up, I mean, I'm sure it was the same for you, but certainly for me, I was born in 57, we didn't hear about lesbianism. Yeah. We certainly didn't hear about it in the Orthodox Jewish community of Montreal. There were none, supposedly. Right. And so I wanted to show just how completely off the, like, you wouldn't even think about it. And, and yet I, I wanted the readers to know she's a lesbian. So it, it just, I had to just say that, you know, all those years that everybody was thinking she was single, she actually had a lover, okay? Uh, and they're living in Tuscany now. So yeah. I don't know, and maybe it was an indulgence, but I just wanted, I wanted to sort of let the reader know that. So yes, it was very offhand. Um, do you feel a responsibility to write about uh, lesbian gay characters? I feel, um, I feel a responsibility when I write about them to write about them in the right way, like like in a real way. And um, my first novel, Throw Away Angels, the protagonist was a lesbian in the first person. And my second novel, there were no lesbians. That was Russia in 1905. And I just didn't feel that I could, it just didn't fit. So. I, I feel a responsibility to be true to life. And Nina, I didn't start out and go, oh, I'm going to have a lesbian character. She evolved, and I thought, you know what? She's feeling kind of like lesbian to me. So yeah, so th that's my responsibility is not, you know, not to have the token lesbians, but to have or gay people, men, whatever, but to have it be sort of to have it be as it really is. That, that there are lesbians, even if you don't know they're there. They're living among us, and. And this is what it was like, you know? There weren't actually any hints. Nobody was picking up on it right. at that time, you know? Your name had come up, and we were doing stuff on IFOA, and I wasn't yeah. too clear about your sexual identity. Not right. that it's any of my business, but yeah. <laughs> okay. because we cover this. Yeah. Like, 
how did that happen? Is it just that people don't care anymore, or do, do um, I not research properly, or like? I think if you don't write books with gay or lesbian protagonists, nobody picks up on it. Yeah. Um, that's my feeling because I've certainly I'm always out. Yeah. Um, that I do feel a responsibility about, by the way, um, to be out. Um, so Why? Because. Um, because I don't want, uh, because it's still, people think the struggle is over and it isn't over. And there's still a lot of kids in the high school I went to um, who may be gay or lesbian and I just want them to have me as, you know, I'm out and I'm really having a nice life. And I remember I had a young cousin who came to visit me years ago in Vancouver. She stayed with me and my partner. And she said, it's really nice. You have such a nice, normal life. And she turned out to be a lesbian. Yeah. And I, so I feel that, I, I just, I feel the responsibility to be honest about who I am. And I'm honest about being Jewish, even in situations where it's not always, you know, that easy. I'm honest about being orthodox as when I grew up that way and still traditional in many ways. And I'm honest about being a lesbian. I do, that's where I feel responsibility and, and to be honest in my writing. But so I don't know why the media, I picked, they picked up on it a lot with Throwaway Angels. Right. In, to ignore me. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that was back in the day. Uh, so. Um, does anyone else ask you about it? Nobody. I've never been asked about it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't get asked about it. No. <laughs> so I, I got asked about it in the Jerusalem report with um, Your Mouth is Lovely. Okay, they asked yeah. me what my advance was. I said, that's none of your business. So then she said, OK, so then let's talk about your sexuality. <laughs> 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 and that's completely that's open, within. But you yeah. see, I, I had this thing. I'm going to be honest about that. So yeah. Yeah. But I wonder, I wonder if people just don't want to. I, I guess because they don't feel it's not, I don't know why. You know, I, you know, they're very, you know, nobody like hides it, but I certainly don't get asked about it. And yeah. it's interesting because it does inform my writing, you know, and, and also I think the struggle, uh, you know, I was a, a married straight person in my 20s. I think the kind of struggle you have to come out and be who you are, it, I think for me, I know it can be very crushing for many people. For me, it's really strengthened me and it helped me be a writer because you don't just, I had many years and I get many rejections and many, uh, many times where nobody, I feel nobody likes my work, but I think being a lesbian is good practice in that. Like, you, right. you're not who you're, you, you don't, didn't turn out to be what everybody wanted you to be. So it gives you strength to just find your own path in other ways as well. Mm -hmm.